So like so many of you guys out there, I prefer my snakes like I like my coffee. Black. Did I just hear that's what she said? Grow up, dude. So today is going to be about snake species that are predominantly black. So why don't we start with one of the most popular black snakes in the pet trade today, and this here is our Mexican black king snake. His name is Medusa, and we've had him for about five years, and Mexican black king snakes are both good pets and easy to keep. They are pretty calm. They're not as food responsive as, say, a California king snake in my experience. They can be a little food responsive in general, though, but most of them are dog tame, just like this guy right here. And of course, they're known for their awesome black throughout the whole body. And typically, they do have a little white spot down there on their chin right there, but the rest of them is predominantly black. There are some that can start off with a bit of pattern on them, but most age into beautiful jet black adults like this guy right here. Now, these are particularly pricey right now. They used to be rather cheap, but with people like YouTubers showing off their Mexican black king snakes, it's gotten a lot of people into Mexican black king snakes. Therefore, the demand is higher and the supply hasn't really changed. So the prices are going higher. They've also been exported pretty heavily to a lot of Asian countries. So the supply has just not been where it's been for the last few years. But if you can't find these guys, there are many other alternatives to them. So much like the Mexican black king snake, our next snake is a non-venomous North American colubrid, and it's a king snake as well. This here is an Eastern black king snake. Now, these are native to the US. Now, these aren't very commonly kept, and they're not very commonly bred in captivity, which for me, that gives me all the more reason to keep them. And just like the Mexican black king snake, they will, as babies, have some white speckling on them. Let's see if I can get it to focus on him. So as you can see, he has a lot of white on him, but it will get blacker with age. And the one thing that differs with these guys is they will typically keep more of that creamy white belly pattern than the Mexican black king snake does. The Mexican black king snake has a very nice velvety purple belly, but this guy will maintain some of those checkers. And this king snake, from what I heard in captivity, they're a little bit harder to get feeding in the beginning, but once they're going, they're good to go. I've never had this girl refuse a meal, and she's growing great. And obviously, this is a young one. This one was born last summer, so it's about six months old. It's got a lot, a lot of time to grow up and stuff like that, but I'm super excited to see how it grows. They will get the same size as a Mexican black king snake. The keeping is not very different than a lot of your other North American colubrids. So typically for North American colubrids, I would do an 85 degree hot spot, and then the cool spot is going to be room temperature, and they will do great. And humidity is not as big of a factor with things like North American colubrids in comparison to a lot of python species. So they are super easy to keep. Once they're going and feeding, they're good. And this one doesn't really have any type of food response, no defensive nature, stuff like that. When she was little, she routed her tail, but I've held her every once in a while, probably barely at all, to be honest, every couple of weeks maybe. And she is this tame, just her natural temperament. So I really, really love this snake. It's a snake that is super underappreciated and honestly will look just like a Mexican black king snake, or it will be even cooler looking, in my opinion, than a Mexican black king snake. Plus, the rarity factor, the fact that nobody's working with them, means that we should have more people working with them. And also, if you guys are interested in king snakes, there's other black king snakes. Notably, I would say the melanistic Thayeri, which Thayeri is another species of king snake that actually has a range into Mexico, much like the Mexican black king snake. And the melanistic form is completely black. So to me, I can barely tell any difference between a Mexican black king snake and a melanistic Thayeri. And the melanistic Thayeri never have any pattern, which is another plus. So that would be something to check out. Kind of like these other king snakes, they are a little bit rarer than your Mexican black king snake. And to be honest, the Mexican black king snake's even hard to find now. So I'm going to put some links below on places where you can find snakes and keep an eye out. So. I have people ask me all the time, where can I buy snakes, where can I buy this, where can I buy that? Well, I'm gonna put those down below and you're gonna have to do all the hard work just as I do to try to find snakes. 
So things like forums, Fauna Classifieds, Kingsnake.com, I know it sounds really, really old school and trust me it is, but that's a great place to find rare species. You'll see old school guys posting up on there more often. Or if you want to check out the Colubrid Classified group on Facebook, that's another great one. And you just got to keep an eye out. You got to wait for the right time. And you got to be ready to buy when it comes up. So I'm going to put at least one of these guys down, but I wanted to show you the pair. This one's a little angry, so I'm going to put this guy back, but I'm going to talk about this girl right here. Now this here is the black rat snake, or more properly called the eastern rat snake. And it's an amazing colubrid species, a cousin of the corn snake in the genus Pantherophis. So they are amazing pets, easy to keep. Now they are a little bit bitey, a little bit flighty, a little bit musky as babies, which means it's a little bit smelly right now because this girl did musk me when I took her out. But once they're out and if you're calm with them, they'll usually be calm with you. They have a defensive nature because they are very, very vulnerable in the wild as babies, but they will calm down as they get some age on them. And this is a super active colubrid. They are semi-arboreal, so much like corn snakes, you may want to give them a little bit of a climbing opportunity, even more so than corn snakes. These are a very slender bodied athletic rat snake and they are super active. So I set up my enclosure and they typically destroy it like within a day because they're so active overnight and they will pretty much take up whatever room that you give them and they'll always eat pretty much. So that's typically not an issue. So eating and keeping super easy, like I said, the other Colubrid's 85 hotspot, room temperature for the rest. But these guys actually get pretty large. I wish I had an adult to show you, but adults can get up to six feet. That would be a pretty decent rat snake there, but more typically they stay around five feet, but that's still a foot or two more than most king snakes and things like corn snakes. So if you want a larger, impressive snake that's black, this might be a good choice. So this is obviously a very beautiful, very, very black animal, but they typically start off as gray and black babies. Some adults will keep some of that gray coloration, but if you get a good quality or locality that is known for its black and its parents were jet black, then you will get a jet black, black rat snake. And I think this one's well on its way to being a five foot jet black adult. And I'm so excited to see them grow. And I'm so excited to have a pair so that we can make more of these because these are something that are underappreciated, but they're also native. So here in Pennsylvania, we can actually find these black rat snakes and all throughout the Eastern coast. And then there's black phases, even of the Midland rat and even of the Western rat. So, very, very similar animals, very, very similar looks with different phenotypes. So I think this is a good choice for anyone looking for a black snake. And as adults, they're going to calm down a lot. And they're not really that worried about being in the open as adults. So you can observe them. You can see them climbing around. You can see them, you know, using their whole enclosure, whatever you give them. So that's what makes this snake a great pet and an even better display snake and an even better snake just to observe. So I'm really, really happy to have these rat snakes and much like their name, they feed readily on frozen thud rodents. So a lot of you guys have seen this guy before. This is our Sumatran short tail python. And much like a few of the other animals before, it is predominantly black as it ages, but has a white belly and quality will also be a factor in these guys as well. So it will start off mostly brown. Some of them are rather black, but will get saturated with black as it ages. And as you can see, this guy right here is not completely black, but still an impressive python, still an awesome animal, still a very dark animal for a python species. There's not too many predominantly black animals out there. There are things like white lip pythons. That would be a predominantly black animal for the most part, but Sumatran short tails aren't terribly hard to keep. So you may have heard about the red blood python or the Borneo short tail python. They're in the same complex, but the Sumatran seems to be the most laid back of all of them, which makes it an awesome animal to handle and it will get much bigger than this. And they are almost like a stuffed sausage as an adult. They have weird metabolisms, therefore they don't even go to the bathroom that much. Just a really, really interesting animal. 
This is an animal that is heavily imported. So when you are buying an animal, you want to make sure that it's captive born and bred, not captive bred. So captive bred can mean that it is born on a farm. And I use quotations when I say born on a farm because you don't know if it was certainly born on a farm. You don't know if it was started with native wildlife from that region. So an animal that is bred and hatched right here in the United States if you are in the US and there are breeders abroad as well. So keep that in mind when you were looking for one just so you can get an animal that thrives a bit easier and you won't have to worry about things like parasites. So I don't know if this really counts but I figured I would take out the water python because even if she is not black she is very beautiful and she probably looks pretty black on camera and well, she is, but it's more of a very, very dark olive or very, very dark gray. And then, of course, striking belly on her, that yellow belly. So this is just a really, really awesome animal to show you guys. I really, really love this whole genus Liasis. But if you guys know any other melanistic morphs out there or you know any other species that are predominantly black, whether they're kept in the pet trade or not, let me know down in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it this far, you're most certainly on the team. So...